Uh, back to Manchester United now. They've dominated the back pages over the last few days. Lots of chat going on about this. Manager Oli Gunnar Solskjaer putting pen to paper on a new contract. So Oli's contract has been extended now until 2024, set to be worth up to £9 million. Um, but really the job at hand, let, let's, dis- uh, let's discuss that, guys, because um, I've been following this quite closely and been looking at the reaction from Manchester United fans. It's very divided, actually. Um, some mm. coming out and saying, look... How, how can you not give him a new contract? Because we've seen progression. Um, but the question is, is progression enough for Manchester United or do they need to start properly challenging? Trevor, for, for me, this season that's just gone wasn't a particularly competitive Premier League. Um, lots of the contenders falling away. I'm not saying yeah. you're smiling as if I'm... Like, it's not a slight on Man City or anything like that. No, um, no. But I just mean it's, it's, it's not been as competitive as, as we've seen for the last couple of seasons, for example. Yeah, I think it'll get back to being competitive. I think with Thomas Tuchel at um, Chelsea uh, winning the Champions League. (laughs) Yeah, favourite to go if if you ask uh, Dave. Um, No, I think they're going to be in and around it, especially if in these last few weeks of the transfer window, they do get a striker. Um, There's talk of Lukaku. So that could be something that would be interesting. And I think that would make them really strong. I still don't understand why Tammy Abraham's not been given the opportunity. Um, you know, for me, he is a top Premier League striker. He's proved it. He's a goal scorer. Uh, and the bits to his game that he might not have, surely Thomas Tuchel is a good enough coach to, to get him to do them things for the team. But he obviously... Uh, would you have him at Man City, Trev? <clears throat> I would, yeah. I'd have him at Manchester You'd City. You'd start him at sure. Man City, Tammy Abraham up front? Yeah. Yeah, wow, I think he? he's a young enough player. I think with Pep's coaching ability, uh, with the teammates around him, yeah, I think he, I think he's a top player. I really do. I think the season that he had at Villa and then he went back in at Chelsea and did very well. Uh, I think he's a handful. He's got everything. He's pace. He looks to stretch the lines. Um, he's a finisher. And listen, no player is perfect, especially at 22, 23. But I think there's a lot of growth there with Tammy. And yeah, he'd be, he'd be someone that I'd be very interested to see at Manchester City. Here's a question for you then. Sorry, Laura. Go on. Would you rather sign Tammy Abraham for 40 mil yeah. or Harry Kane for 150? Tammy. Really? It just goes against my principles or, or what on, I Trev. think about the club. Honestly, it really does. I just don't want to see the club going out there and spending that ridiculous amount of money to bring one player in. Because I think that just kills it then. You might as well, you might as well pack up. Tammy Abraham or Danny Ings? I think they're both similar in, in a lot of ways. Both proven. Um, I think just with the potential... I would prefer to go with Tammy just because he's got a lot more growth. I think obviously you're getting the end product with Danny Ings, but I do feel they're both top strikers and um, I, I would like to see Tammy at the club. But I don't think it's going to happen because I don't think um, mm. you know, Manchester City have so shown any kind of interest in him. But for me, he, he is a top player and given the... Up- Listen, I'd love to see him at West Ham. Yeah. I think he'd fit in really well. Antonio needs that rest. He can't play week in, week out. Yeah. Um, and, you know, with his age and what he brings to the table. I think if he puts it all out there one week and then Tammy comes and plays the next week, I think that could be really a formidable um, partnership there. Back to the red side of Manchester. Yeah. Um, let's let's discuss the job that Oli's done since he came in. Mm-hmm. So so the, the position that Manchester United were in um, to where they are now, Yeah. where has that progression well, been, Jamie? Well, it's been improved. I mean, there has been progress. Champions League football again, they're getting to finals. Um, they just, they haven't got it over the line in terms of where Manchester uh, United are always expected to be and that's winning trophies and they haven't they haven't managed to do that they spent an awful lot of money as well paying big wages they have to compete so my argument is is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has improved the team is they have made progression but is it enough no is it enough because this is Manchester United who will spend a hundred million pound on a player they have to win trophies and they're not doing that. Tell me what it's like from a player's perspective, guys, because obviously um, I, I mentioned earlier on, I was reading um, tweets of Rob Blanchett, who's a, a journalist, a broadcaster, a Manchester United fan, and he was saying, look, it really, it, it does make sense because if you have been the front man for the last year trying to get deals like Jaden Sancho over the line, why would Manchester United get him there and then suddenly say, right, Ollie, thanks for your time, see you later. The, the never players, bothered me. Never bothered you? No, nah, I, I, if I'm going to Manchester United, it's because I want to play for Manchester United. United. doesn't matter who the manager is. Well, it's a big part of it, though, no? You're day in, day out with that manager. Mm. Um, I don't know. I, I think you've got to have a rapport. I think when you go for the meeting, there's got to be that kind of connection and that belief in the project, in, in the way that you're going to be playing in that football side. Um, for me, I think it's a no-brainer. I think Ollie's done superb. Manchester United was a shambles before Ollie came in. Uh, he came in, uh, he was asked to come in to help him out when Mourinho left. 
I think that the, there was it was toxic. It was a toxic environment. The squad were underachieving. Um, you look at the situation with Paul Pogba. There was no n there was no form at all. He was getting injuries. It, um, I think when you look at him in particular, he looked disinterested, and uh, they needed someone just to steady the ship. I think he did that. They finished sixth, then they finished fourth and second. A few semi-finals last season. The season just gone. They finished. They got to the final. Um, I think he's proven that he can bring in big players. Jaden Sancho obviously just signed. Uh, Bruno Fernandez, Edison Cavani is brought in. I think he's good for the club. I think he understands what Manchester United is all about, and he, he's he's good at relaying that to the players and I think when you look at everyone compares him to Sir Alex which is unfair anyway yeah but when you look at Sir Alex Sir Alex went in in November 1986 he didn't win anything until what was it 1990 the FA Cup so that's three and a half years Ollie's only been there what two and a half years now so give him time I think he's going in the right direction um, I think if they can get a striker in, because Cavani's not going to be able to play a lot of games, Green, Mason Greenwood might not be ready to play that number nine role yet. But if they can get a striker in, um, I think they're going to be competitors to Manchester City. They're going to be competitors to Chelsea. But all in all, I just think Oli's a good man. The players want to play for him. Uh, he's got a lot of respect amongst his peers. And uh, for me, I think it's a, a well-earned um, new contract. And I hope he does well because he's a top man. Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods, Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10, on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.